welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Joel. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Joel is subbing for Ross tonight because he was too busy. So he says. Yeah, I, I mean, we we've been trying to record this actual episode. <laughs> there, this is our third attempt at, at scheduling and recording, uh, and Ross just ran out of time. So he's he's actually uh, I think he's at the beach, uh, which. I don't want to be at the beach right now. It's hot. As, it's crazy hot. <laughs> I'd like to be at the beach, but it's only, you know, 14 degrees here at the moment. And that's Celsius. So, yeah, that's not warm enough. No. Even I know that's not warm enough. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I remember uh, I did the London trip years ago. And so, like, before I knew I was going, like, I switched my phone to Celsius so I could start to, like, yep. figure it out. <laughs> like, I'd just be like, oh, what? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, this is good enough. So, uh it's been a hot minute since we've recorded a show um it's actually almost it's a little less than a month since we've recorded a show which is kind of nuts yeah like we slammed a ton together and then i went off to montana and then yeah it's just been kind of nuts getting re-acclimated so um the industry news of the world uh, russ Ross mentioned it to me. Uh, it came out today that Ford has massively ruined the Bronco hardtops. And the only way you're getting a Bronco right now is if you order a soft top. And all soft tops are coming with the hardtop prep kit. But it looks like aftermarket hardtop solutions won't be available until 2023. That's not good. No. It's a massive F up. Uh, I didn't do enough digging. I, I briefly skimmed a, a letter from Ford to the dealer kind of thing uh, written by uh, our, on Hooniverse. Uh, Camille wrote up a post about he had, yeah, I mean, it was on the Bronco forum. The letter was, so it's not like he was a massive scoop that, uh, but he, he kind of broke it down and, and Camille has a Bronco on order. Like mm. he has skin in the game here. Like there's money. Involved, well, he had a, so. He's had a press vehicle, but not a, his Correct. actual own vehicle yeah he got a hold of the press vehicle which uh i think he massively enjoyed <laughs> and i i've enjoyed seeing more pictures of him around lately but uh it i'm not sure exactly who dropped the ball on that so we'll have to if, you, if you're super curious you can google search that right now <laughs> uh but if not wait till ross gets back because he definitely wanted to talk about it um excuse I me mean, there was a picture that was floating around the internet of, of just uh, or video actually i saw uh of just hundreds of them just lined up in car park waiting to go somewhere but um yeah not actually going anywhere yeah which i thought was quite interesting yep and the other thing i've noticed is everybody and their mom seems like they've driven the hyundai santa cruz in the last couple <laughs> of weeks which is the tiny little hyundai pickup truck um I, I've maintained that like the reason I like the Bronco sport and the reason I like I'm kind of a fan of the Maverick is my kids are approaching driving age in the next couple of two to three years. So like finding a secondhand Santa Cruz or a secondhand Bronco sport or Maverick seems like it might actually be, I did joke with my wife the other day. I was like, we're just going to buy them all Subaru Outbacks and just like <laughs> wrap them in as much safety as we can. That's uh, not a bad thing to be in. Right. Like, there are worse vehicles, but then like I started looking at like prices and I was like, maybe an Outback's too much like horizontal room, like maybe a Forester. <laughs> yeah, it's long. It's longer though, too. That's the thing is that yeah. the Forest is a little bit shorter wheelbase. So yeah. depending on, um, yeah. How long so, until you've got one that starts driving? Uh, my oldest is 13, so he can get a restricted, I think at 15, unless we want to like use oh, a f- Wow. Unless we want to use a farm address, and then I think he can get one at fourteen. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Ah, uh, no, we're having that. No, no, not, no, not talking. You just about spend that so yet. much time getting the two car garage sorted. You don't want to have to then go and find a third vehicle for him to paddock bash you. Exactly. Uh, but I did have a friend send me a ton of websites from like Eastern Europe. Um, the amount of Lada Nevas that are listed for, like less than a thousand euros supposedly oh, running wow. and driving like yeah. the only issue right now is like then i looked at like or i, di- I didn't even look i just my wife works in, in international exports that's why i asked her i was like hey ah. how bad would it be to ship oh. one and she What's was like cost me she's like four times the amount you would buy it for i was like yeah. okay so that's, that's me not- and fox 
me and Fox Body Mustangs. Exactly. Yeah. Not super ideal right now to ship anything in the world. Uh, turns no. out a, a global, global economy shutdown and then trying to get back into it is not great. So no, I need, I need to touch base with my friend and ask him uh, what the current going rate is just to leave. Yeah. Uh, the fact that, um, yeah. So I don't get tempted to, to look at Fox bodies again. Right. Uh, I will say like the variance in um, state of Lada is hilarious. There was one for like 300 euros and it had no, no tires, no wheels, nothing. It was just on center blocks. And then like a running and driving examples, like 1100, like just, <laughs> and then there's some, that like one was running. They said it was running and driving. They were like 700. I'm like, my bet that's not great supposedly parts are available though like well i've just dropped into the chat this is a friend of mine's here in victoria his one that runs and drives and it's like his third or fourth one it hasn't come through yet there it is that's there it is oh that's a lot of megabytes we might be waiting a bit for me to see this image. <laughs> I did go the high res. Sorry, I should have uh, gone the, the low res one. It's okay. We'll just have to keep talking so the listener doesn't have any idea. Now the viewers are going to realize. That. <laughs> <laughs> Which somebody asked me the other day, like, why aren't you going to do a live show? And I was like, first of all, nobody wants to do this at eight o'clock or nine o'clock East Coast time. <laughs> People have actual lives. <laughs> yeah. Or for you, it's midday, right? Like, yeah, it's midday. Well, it's not even. It's eleven forty-five at the moment. So, yeah, it's, a, it's a happy Friday to you, right? Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I need to post something there because Robbie always does that every Friday. So, yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> you get to beat him to it. You get to beat him to it every yeah. Friday. <laughs> oh uh, man! I always try and reply because when he usually does it, it's usually like early hours of Saturday morning. Right for you, yeah. The weekend is is going strong. Yeah. Ooh, can you hear my thunderstorms? No. Oh, yeah. We've had a, a since like Tuesday. It's been like, uh, oh man, I don't know what my conversion would be, but it's been like high nineties, and the heat index has taken okay. it to triple digits. And oh wow! That broke this afternoon with like a line of thunderstorms showed up and just dumped. Like my my wife has a, an aloe plant that we keep on the back porch, and I, it was raining so hard that the water was splashing on the ground, even though the salad plant's in under the, the cover a little bit, it was splashing yeah. on the ground and bouncing up into the pot to the point that the <laughs> pot was full of water. I was like, maybe we should slide that back a little more, especially it's a desert plant. It's not supposed to be over water, but yeah. Uh, now, no. now we're in a shooting gallery tonight. So it's pop-up storm after pop-up storm, which is kind of oh, nice. wow. So let's move. I, this image is going to take forever to download. <laughs> let's move on. Do you want to go tank or big dog first? Because you actually saw them. Um, either, either or. Either or. We can I, do... I think... Let me just... Where's my reference? We'll start with... Let's go big dog because it's it's actually smaller than the That's tank. Kinda, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what my uh, train of thought was there. If we talk about the big... Yeah. So this is Haval? Correct. Okay. You never know with the... Uh, uh, pronunciations around the world especially yeah and where'd my settings go for my image search tools man you can you tell it's been uh, a month since I've, I've done a yeah. podcast <laughs> well i have to ask so because this this will mean that it's probably three shows in a row that it's been referenced but did the kids like driven we haven't watched it okay because I heard your reference it. on the last show that you said you took it in the car for the uh, trip. And I thought to make it three shows in a row to reference it. So I thought uh, I'd ask. They they never watched Driven. Uh, they watched um, my daughter fell in love with the latest Trolls movie. But uh -huh. she didn't say, I think it's what called like Trolls World Tour. She wouldn't say that. She would say Poppy Troll, which is the name of the characters, Poppy. Yeah. But she would say it so fast, it would sound like she was saying Paw Patrol. And we were like, that movie's not out yet. We don't have that movie. She's like, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. It's Poppy Troll, Poppy Troll, Poppy Troll. Got it. So, yes, we, at, at one point, uh, we, we had a, yeah, I'll get 
to the most of the trip later. But at one point we had a long day where we ended up being like, we tried to go to a McDonald's. There was all kinds of like uh, Chick-fil-A. We tried to hit a Starbucks. We tried to go to a Starbucks and a grocery store, like just horrible mess. Just trying to get some form of sustenance that we didn't prepare ourselves. And by and what, the end, they were closed or they were too busy? They were closed. Uh, there was a guy oh, at wow. the end of the drive through window refusing to move. So they had to call the cops. They didn't know when something was going to oh. come. The other one, the other was closed until we drove like 30 minutes away to Chick-fil-A and Chick-fil-A was open and had us through in 30 seconds because Chick-fil-A oh, does wow. that. Um, mm-hmm. But by the end of that, like we were headed back to the cabin, the kids were all eating and the movie was almost over. And she's like, again. And like from the back seat, there was a kid going like, this is the fourth time we've watched this today. <laughs> so she was, she dominated uh, the, the DVD <laughs> viewing. So she, she was in fact, the big dog. <laughs> but I'm with you. I like Driven as well. It's a great movie. It's a horrible movie and a great movie. So yeah. Uh, he picked, like you said, he picks up coins with tires. Yeah. It's that's fun. So for the uh, viewer, you are now seeing the Haval big dog for the audio listener, uh, a slightly wider Jeep Renegade. Yeah. Fairly similar. They're fairly similar sort of platform. Okay. Um, the wheelbase is, uh, I'm going to go Mills because that was the reference that I got. Mm. It's uh, two. It's 2.7 meters uh, is the wheelbase. Um, okay. And then with a minimum ground clearance of um, 200 mil. So um, it's a, it's a really nice, it's a really nice little, um, nice little car. Like we, if you bring up the shot that's on my, my Instagram, it's actually alongside the, uh, the tank. So you can see the two of them side by side. Um, But yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting, uh, interesting car. So it's 150, yep. 155 kilowatt, two liter turbocharged engine. Um, I love this paintwork. The paint in it was just brilliant. Um, I was helping out another photographer that, that was shooting or videographer that was shooting the event for uh, GWM and Haval. So I was just effectively <laughs> helping helping him out. But uh, I shot a little bit of stills and this is the shot of, uh, of the two of them together. Um, so obviously that's the big dog on the left and then the tank 300 uh, on the on the right. Uh, and yeah, this was, uh, they were a cool little thing. Um, so they were, these were unveiled to journalists to have a look at, um, to consider, which they're considering probably bringing possibly both to Australia. Um, the uh, big dog has a seven speed DCT, so a wet dual clutch, okay. um, 300, 325 Newton meters of torque, um, <laughs> McPherson uh, independent suspension, um, pretty good all, all terrain system. And then a, um, a Borg Warner Howdex uh, four-wheel drive system. Um, they didn't take the big dog off-road. Um, as you can see, it's clean. Um, the <laughs> tank, they did. And it seemed very capable watching the journalists drive it around. Um, it was quite interesting. So the tank is, again, another two-litre turbocharged engine with 167 kilowatts of power. Um, torque up to 387 newton metres. The It runs an eight-speed ZF. Um Really? Slightly, yeah. Slightly, only very slightly longer wheelbase of two point seven five zero. So two, uh, yeah, and um, with a little bit higher ground clearance, two hundred and twenty four mil. Um, and it does a thirty three percent approach angle, thirty four degree uh, departure angle, and seventy percent maximum grade. So, um, they're quite quite nice. Um, in terms of what you know, they're, they're capable of. Of doing, but if you do a bit of a search, Chris, there's some uh, interior shots um, as well, and the interior is just unbelievably good on both Which one. Of them. They just uh, <laughs> either either go the big dog okay. or the or the tank. Yeah, I, um, I had big you. dogs uh, prepped. Okay, least, cool. It was it was part of my search already. So yeah, you're, it's, you're, um, and, yeah, and it's, I think I'm wrong. It looks more like a compass. It's bigger than a renegade. Yeah, I'm not fully au okay fait with them. Actually, that's my picture. Um, yeah, Is it really? It's, it's yeah, it's stunning <laughs> interior. Like it's such a really nice design, and like it's all really well built. Like all the plastics, the infotainment screen is just stunning. Um, there's a lot of tech there that, um, that that there's there, which is really really cool. Um, and so, yeah, just just it's just really really impressive and really nicely finished all throughout. Is is 
and this is just lack of ignorance of Chinese manufacturing or auto manufacturers is, is Haval someone who's been around for a while? Like I, yeah, they've been a while. So great wall motors, they were calling themselves great wall motors and then Haval is, is sort of two separate brands, but they've now great wall has now just become uh, GWM. They've kind of shortened it. Okay. Um, and so great wall, or GWM have their, their Ute and then Haval have their more SUV styles. And so they've separated the two brands in Australia to, to run sort of separately. And um, uh, part of this event was for the journalists. They were also driving the Jolion, which is their smaller, one of their smaller mid-size SUVs. And it was the first time I'd actually had a chance to see the Jolion in the flesh uh, when the journalists arrived. And that's, again, a, a really nice looking vehicle. And it, it's quite interesting just to see how far these vehicles have come. And it's a lot of people reference um, Kia and Hyundai when they first started out in the market many years ago and just how far they've come um, and, and what they've done. Uh, so, yeah, it's really, really quite interesting just to see where they where they've come and how they've developed. It's like MG in Australia. MG is another brand that is really really growing, and every generation of the vehicles, just everything improves. The design language improves, the interior, the quality, the finish. Um, yeah, it's it's really really interesting. So Chinese, um, the Chinese brands are are really pushing strongly into into this market and and are doing quite well and selling quite well as a result. Yeah, I with so. What what's still being manufactured in Australia is anything, nothing, right? Okay, so everything so the, the has only, to be imported. Yeah, everything's imported, and even the stuff that we're not even really assembling but converting. So Rams are can are bought are built in the US, brought to Australia, and then converted from um, left hand uh, left hand to right hand drive. Um, and then there's also we're also doing it with Camaros, but the Camaros have effectively sort of stopped and now Silverados as well. So Silverados are coming here and they're built obviously in the U S and then they're brought here and then converted to right-hand drive. So Ram trucks and Silverado trucks are two of the, the bigger ones. And, but there's also it, probably in more higher numbers that are being sold through dealerships. So through the old Holden dealerships effectively. Okay. Um, and now are growing quite well. So yeah, this is the interior of the tank. Uh, and so again, if we like, compared like the uh, if we looked at the outside of both vehicles and then the inside of both vehicles, if you just shown me pictures without telling me which one went to which car, I would have thought this was for sure not the tank. Yeah, this looks it's I would put it and I don't want to put it on like the same level, but like styling cues wise, if you'd mm. have told me this was a Genesis. Yeah, if this was a, a GV70 or whatever, I'd have been like, all right, cool. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Well, you look at it, it looks like a G-Wagon. The interior is very G-Wagon feel and, and style to, to the interior. I mean, that brushed metal plate uh, across the dash is, <laughs> and, and the gauges, the gauges are all like, they feel quality. They're genuine. So is that, they, is that an entire like LCD screen all the way across? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember whether it's two piece or one. Okay. I'm even even if it is two piece, it's still really impressive. Looking. Yeah, it's really impressive, and the quality is brilliant. So I had to move the, I think I moved them both, or, uh -huh. or I just just turning them around for for the for, to for when I was taking photos, um, and just the detail on that screen is just unbelievable. Like it's really really good. It reminded me of looking at like the Audi screens and the Skoda screens inside, they're like really, and probably even Volkswagen to a certain degree because it's all that same family, but <laughs> just re really nice, high quality. Um, yeah, just an amazing finish on them. And, and yeah, I, I was just, I think I just couldn't believe how good they were and how good they looked. Um, and yeah, it was interesting watching the the, the Genos drive the, the tank around. Um yeah, it's very, 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 very capable because um, I was driving it against the the Great Wall Utes at the same time. Um, and yeah, in the, on this this is actually at a four by four park on the outskirts of Melbourne, which I've been to many time. And and yeah, they were pushing it, putting it through its paces, like really, really quite interesting. Is is at least so with the tank? It looks like the the drive mode selector uh, is at least down on a knob. Was the big dogs in the infotainment stuff? I think it was as well. I think it's part of that 
okay. center console section. Okay. It was just but I actually actually got it. I, I barely got a chance to, to really have a detailed look at them. Uh, it was covering the day, covering yeah. the event for, this, for the this, for the these the, these the buttons right here look like locking differentials to me. Like that looks like yeah. front and lock. Like okay, like <laughs> they've yeah. decided to uh, put something together that really can do some stuff. Yeah, it's pretty serious tech with what it can do. So, are are the Chinese import vehicles cheaper? For you guys, I mean, versus Japanese or American yeah, stuff look, coming over. I think I don't I'm trying to remember whether there was any reference to pricing. They're saying for us, like they're in the thirty-five to forty thousand and forty-five to fifty thousand. So they're in a pretty good price point for what that sounds they are. really reasonable, actually. Yeah, very it's, reasonable for what what they'll do. And yeah. um, I think I even said to someone, I said if if. I think if the tank had a slightly bigger boot, I would probably consider one. <laughs> I'm spoiled now because I, I you I'm have them massive. I have my wa wagon, and, and it's funny. <laughs> I was I was um, poking around a Range Rover during recently, and uh, I opened that up and had a look in the back of that. And even there, like it, it's probably a little bit wider than what mine is, but it's not as deep. Like that, the depth in it is kind of really different and it's weird until after and, and and this is kind of why i've you know i've been a wagon fan for years and i still have to write my intro piece on hooniverse about it i've got the photos and the detail i've just got to finish writing it but it's just a wagon just has so much space in it and even bigger suvs like i, I love that i mean i don't i could fold the seats down but i just like having that space behind right. the second row it's um we we actually but, had to you know, fold the third row down in the suburban the other day we had yeah. we, we were making a supply run um we've been to the big box stores and the what i didn't realize is my third row is uh i knew it was elect electric i didn't realize yeah. how fast it was <laughs> like i hit the button and it goes thump. i was like oh yeah. and i hit the button and went yeah. thump right back up and i was like what is happening? oh that's interesting so that even when you hit the button to bring them yeah, back up it's quick returning yeah yeah because mine like, go down, like mine have got manual pulls on either side of the boot to put mine down, but right. they're manual, they're not electric, they don't come back up. But like mine just literally drop, like yeah. they're really, it's really quite quick. And it wasn't until recently when I was cleaning it that I actually figured out that I can pull, so the second row's base seats, you can yep. pull them up and then fold the other one flat, take the headrest off, um, easier than what I think uh jeff had trying to do it in the defender um <laughs> and then it slots into the top of the base seat which is yeah, quite interesting to have those so, holes there for it right yeah which is interesting i haven't haven't done it as yet but it's on the list of things to try next time i have to take a whole lot of stuff but we get both our bikes in the back of mine without a problem and and um without with it just flat without it having to go real flat and yeah it's quite quite interesting so so uh long time ago we had a 2003 yukon xl and it had the headrest thing for the second row captain's chairs. And so yeah. when we would take back when we only had like one kid, we still had that vehicle and we'd leave his car seat in one captain's chair. And then we would fold the other one flat and, or yeah, it would fold all the way forward and you could put the cooler there. You could put everything else there. And then my wife would sit in the third row and she just had all of the space to help deal with all the other baby crap that we had with him. Uh, but yeah, those, I love that little headrest thing on the on the second row seats. I found yeah, it's it quite it's quite handy. I found a all white image of a tank interior. Oh wow! And it, as a parent, I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> Look at how white that is. <laughs> that is so white. Like yeah. Oh, the mess. They'll oh, be, I can't. There'll be yeah. goldfish in that for days. Yeah, that's gonna just be mess. Then, I, then I have to try to remember if my my food references actually get all the way down to you. <laughs> no, they do. We yeah, watch okay, enough good. American tele enough American television to know what that what that references to, to. You and I have not talked yet about freaking Bluey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I did hear you reference Paw Patrol. My two nephews love that show. So yeah, pa Paw Patrol. We they don't watch Paw Patrol as much, but Bluey's on Disney Plus, and so okay, 
the, the like all of their kindles have access to it and like so i get yeah. i get fun australian accents in the morning from like <laughs> kid dogs the best was uh some and it was on instagram and it was a reel and it went by super fast but somebody broke down like where bluey lives oh cool and, and like what his parents do and they were like so based on the neighborhood that's a million dollars house yeah his right. dad's okay. an archaeologist and his mom's a bus driver or a school nurse or something i don't he's like they're up to something dirty like there's no way <laughs> that these two could afford this home i was like all right sure buddy you got me for 30 seconds <laughs> which is probably 27 seconds too long <laughs> yeah so are these coming to australia or there's is- talk that there's talk that yes that i think okay. the tank is probably the most likely to be the first one to land and then possibly the big dog to follow um but yeah there, there's probably definitely a market for them um and i think it 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 would certainly sort of shake up that part of the market for with, what else is is out there with the tank i i mean it it's not a 70 series no. competitor but it looked to me that's like the people in the city that want the CUV instead of mm. the the giant SUVs or the wagons. Like I see them mm. going with something like that. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is that every set of market is kind of different and, and everyone kind of looks at it, a, 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 you know, for, look is always looking for something that a little bit different in the market. Um, and particularly with, you know, the, the car industry it is, is as it is in Australia at the moment we're still seeing what we call the COVID tax where used cars are prices are through the roof. Um, Yeah. And I know that (laughs) after selling, selling my, my Mazda, but when I bought the wagon, I got, you know, a couple of thousand dollars more than what I expected for it. And, and people are still saying that, like there's a lot of cars out there that more enthusiast or any vehicle where you're actually getting decent money for cars because there's still that demand. So the, obviously the, the chip shortage is obviously still hurting them. And, and obviously for us, it's even harder because it takes longer um, for vehicles to get to us. And obviously with COVID and a lot, a lot, there's less stuff that's arriving and that shipping is taking longer and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting, but we're now seeing that, you know, the, the numbers slumped in terms of sales a fair bit last year, but then it's slowly on the return. But the other, the funniest thing is that we talk, we're talking more, we've been talking more at the sort of more lower end of the market, obviously with these, but if we go to the top end of the market where, you know, we talk sort of 200 series, the price on those now, if you were to sell them, you had one, you had a decent one and you were trying to sell it before the 300 arrives later this year, the price for those is through the roof. There was um, guys selling them for, you know, massive twenty, thirty thousand dollars over probably sticker money for for them because there's just everyone wants to buy you know 200 series before the 300 comes because obviously they wanted the v8 diesel and stuff and that that's not obviously continuing with the new one but it's quite interesting to see um you know what what's happening in in that market And, and it still is and so you know talking to a bunch of car enthusiast friends the other week we managed to get out in between um uh, in between cruises, in between uh, lockdowns, to go for a quick cruise, uh, and yeah, it was it was quite interesting. Obviously, took my wagon, and, and um, there's a pic if you want to bring it up on my my other Insta. Um, and yeah, we were just saying, you know, guys were saying oh, maybe changing vehicles, or a friend of mine was getting rid of one of his cars and was buying a an i30, and he got decent money for his old car and then there's another friend that that's thinking that with the market as it is because you know i30s at the moment um the fastback is is going to slowly disappear he's got a fastback and so you know do i sell that while there's good money in that because you know there's they're not going to have it for the next model generation uh, and stuff like that so it's it's quite interesting looking at that market and what it's doing and so yeah there's always room for i suppose for something else to come in and kind of shake up that market because you know with our borders closed at the moment and you're not really allowed to leave the country unless for extenuating circumstances more and more people are looking at wanting to holiday at home and kind of like dan was talking about last week there we are lined up so you know there's a there's a variety of of cars you know that used that used car market like you know my friends just sold that uh fiat he's traded that on an i30 n 
the new okay. gen. Um, and then, you know, my friend with the MX-5 down there, he bought that and that, you know, he's absolutely loving, you know, having having that as a bit of a fun, a fun car. Um, you know, it, 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 it was kind of fun to jump out and, and go for a, a bit of a cruise and, and just talk a bit of shop and, and sort of enjoy, you know, getting out and about but as i was saying that's my mate's 944 is he it's <laughs> there fantastic he yeah it's a stunning car really really nice um bit of kit so that's us down the down the peninsula um <laughs> is that you know more and more people are holding it home so more and more people are spending like dan um on who was on the recent episode talking about going and exploring um exploring your own country you know and being able to do that sort of stuff so more people are buying you know caravans caravan sales are through the roof and and four-wheel drives and and used four-wheel drives and stuff like that so um yeah i think the it's an interesting market to look at uh and i think yeah at the end of the day the where the the uh, haval and the the great wall would fit into the market i think it'd be quite interesting and i think there's quite a few people that probably would consider you know those to be a more affordable entry into that off-road market. Yeah. I, I'm all for more people getting out and about. Yeah. It's the amount of RVs and just trailers and all kinds of outside recreational stuff that I've seen in the last mm. month alone, just and just around town, like, the amount, yeah, you're a hundred percent right. People are trying to go. We, we're not going to be able to go international for a while. Hmm. Like Canada opened the border, and everybody was like, "You sure about that? You really sure?" They've about opened that? it. Like, I didn't realize they'd re- reopened it. They, it opened like <laughs> maybe two weeks ago. I'm fairly. I don't know if it's shut again or not. But <laughs> okay. uh, when we were in Montana, uh, I didn't realize how close we were to Canada being near a glacier. Mm-hmm. Like it was less than an hour away, like yeah, 50 miles. Like, yeah, you were really close. Cause I yeah. looked at one of your photos that you posted <laughs> and um, it's like, wow, that's, you know, that's really, really close. And that's why I could feel it look like the Rockies. So yeah, it, <sighs> I don't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> I, we, we've talked on the show before we were going to Montana. We went to Montana. <laughs> we survived. Um, the only there was only one day in the car where I was like, I don't know if we're going to make it. Um, and that was actually the end of the first day. And so we left Kansas city and drove North out of Kansas city, um, crossed into Missouri because you have to do that in Kansas city. Um, you're oh, really, to, you got to go well, backwards to go forwards. It's just the way the highways work. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see that. So, M- Missouri kind of cuts across a little bit at the top. So, as soon as you start heading out north, you're eventually going to get hit Missouri anyway for us. Um, so we hit Missouri, we hit Iowa, we waved at Nebraska. We were very close to Nebraska, but we never entered Nebraska. Um, hit so South. Do- so, 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 this is me Sue. butchering American Suix City and Suix Sue. Falls. <laughs> Sioux City. Sioux, Sioux City. City. Sioux yep. Okay. So, so you Nate, go, did you go that way? So yes, we went through yep. through Sioux City and then you hit Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, and so um the speed limit in Missouri was 70. The speed limit in Iowa used to be 65. It was 70. It was very nice. Appreciate that, <laughs> Iowa. Um, as soon as you hit the border with South Dakota, the speed limit goes to 80. Nice. So uh, allegedly, I would set the cruise control at 87 in South Dakota. Um, there, there was nobody around. It was, it was completely fine. And then, um, so yeah, you turn left at Sioux Falls and, and get on I-90 or Interstate 90, and you take that all the way across. So when you're in Iowa, they start to advertise a, a place in South Dakota called Wall Drug. Um, it is a tourist trap from what I can tell. <laughs> it was, it was completely, uh, I, I sent here, I sent this picture to Ross and I think the caption was, it was just like somewhere in South Dakota. Cause we were at a gas station and I wasn't a hundred percent sure where we were. I just knew how far it was till the next thing. It was like three and a half hours till the next <laughs> thing. Like just, and of course my internet is going incredibly slow and that's pixelated. Oh, oh, technology tonight. So 
that was just random. I, I was amazed at how good of gas mileage I was getting. Because what's in that? It's a, it's a 5.3 liter V8, okay. but it has the cylinder deactivation. Deactivation, same as yep. what we used to have in the Commodore. Yep. And it has the uh, six speed transmission. So it's not, I wish it was like the new ones are like all 10 speeds, right? So yep. to get 20, uh, it, it was at like 19 something for Missouri and Iowa in the, the first part of South Dakota, it was like 19.9. When we turned west, it changed a little bit and came down because the wind, <laughs> the wind was blowing a different way. So, yeah. um, but I will give credit to that that Yakima box that was up on top. I never knew it was up there. <laughs> like I thing. know, like there was a moment entering Glacier Park where I went through the wrong lane of the park entrance, and the park ranger did one of these, sir sir i'm like okay i know i've messed up here she's like you need to go incredibly slow when you leave this because i forgot it was on top <laughs> i completely forgot the box was up there because it never made noise there was never wind noise from it um yeah it was fantastic it was it was uh, so good up there i have a question yeah um why don't i have one of those off the road again stickers yet uh yeah i need to get that in the mail too <laughs> part of which we I need we, one of those Ross made stickers. He sent me a bunch, and then like we just never talk about them. <laughs> like we, so it's like, the, it's like the second thing I saw on the back of a car. I yeah. saw the um, the 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 dealer sticker above the suburban badge, Ugh. and then um, and then I saw the the uh, the other stickers. So yeah. yeah, I'm actually about to go yell at that dealer. <laughs> oh really? You got yeah. a problem with the car? No? Uh, I got home and uh, I was like, hey, I should probably check the jack. There's no jack in the truck. What? I just drove 3,600 miles with no jack in the vehicle. Oh, God. I can only imagine what would happen if that, that had happened. Exactly. Do you have any form of roadside assistance? We do. We do through our, okay. our, our auto insurance. We do have roadside insurance. So I had uh, to use mine for the first time in a while. And then I managed to flatten my battery in mine. So. Oh, that's not good. So we did stop at Wall Drug. The, the kids played on the goofiest uh, of thing. This is referred to as a jackalope. Yes. <laughs> uh even even the big kids want to get in she absolutely loved this place uh my my fourth kid she got the pink cowboy hat she got her outfit she had a blast like i, oh, I didn't that fast oh yes yeah, she is she's so fast uh she is now three um wow. in in town they have uh so old west american west towns they used to have places where you could always tie up your horse when you came into town whether it was a, a piece of wood, horizontal, or actual individual poles. So along the street in this town, they still had these, in, they had metal poles with metal horse heads and then a ring through the nose where you could tie up your reins kind of thing. And uh, she and I were walking down the street. We were headed back to uh, the truck to go on to the next thing. And I felt her tug at me. And I was like, what is happening? And she had grabbed one of the poles and was trying to use it like, like, you know how kids get those those horse heads on a stick kind of thing yeah. and you ride it around? She was trying to do that to the pole. She's like, this is what <laughs> I'm doing now, Dad. We're playing horsies. I'm like, no, we're not. We are going. <laughs> so from Wall Drug, we and we we did actually kind of waver on this one. We were like, I don't know if we're going to do this or not. We stopped at Mount Rushmore. I saw the pictures. That was so cool. And the reason we stopped is I, I don't know the next time I'm driving across South Dakota. <laughs> No. <laughs> the the secret is you can see all of the heads very well without having to go into park oh really it's free to enter <laughs> uh but you pay for parking i think it's like i think it was eight bucks like it wasn't it wasn't super super uh high but the boys wow. loved it they were hanging yeah. out taking all these pictures with them oh there's some google helps me out so there is also a road that as you drive out, you get over here and you can actually like look up at the side. You can get a profile shot of Washington. Oh, wow. uh, and, in, and it's just like a different angle to what everyone else has seen the whole time. Um, it, I'm always, I, this is the second time I've been there. I was there when I was a, a, a teenager before that. Um, you always think it's going to be bigger. <laughs> it's, it's really just 
four heads up on a hill. Like it's really not that big. Like, and you, and then you can kind of sit through it. And I guess there's a, there's a, it said there was a presidential trail, but we we're like, no, we're going to keep going. Um, so how but, long did it take you to get to there from home? Oh man. Um, 11 hours. So you did you do left home and got to there in a day or did you overnight somewhere? No, that was there. That was in a day. So oh, wow. from, so we had, we, we, we picked a hotel in Gillette, Wyoming, mm-hmm. which was 12 hours from the house. Okay. So with, with the kids, I always know that whatever the time is, it's plus an hour or an hour and a half, just cause mm-hmm. potty breaks, snack breaks, whatever. Yeah. Um, and jumping off to Rushmore added another hour to it. So by the end of the day, it was definitely like a full, like 13 and a half hours for the kids in the wow. car. Um, the thing we did find out at Rushmore though, is side-by-sides are street legal in South Dakota. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were everywhere. Um, as, as we were kind of like popping around and seeing stuff, which was kind of cool. Um, can you really not hear these thunderstorms at all? I can now. Okay. I've been hearing like, it for the last couple of minutes. That's like, I can really hear it. That's amazing. They're really loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the boys thought it was hilarious that there were side by sides all over the place. Um, mm. I don't think Ross the, would love it. Yeah. And so I sent that, I actually sent that to Ross and Zach Bowman and Kevin Ray at UTV Driver. And they were all like, oh, we're going. And I was like, okay, just <laughs> a long way for you guys. But after we left Rushmore, we kind of, so I came across I-90 and dropped down to Rushmore. I, I assumed it would like kick me back up. Um, the navigation took me off the backside of Rushmore and then up and across. Um, so we drove like two lane roads across Southeastern Wyoming and got to see stuff like this. Oh, wow. That's cool. So, and then the wildfire haze kind of set in and so this is the sun. <laughs> so down as far as Douglas and Casper or a bit higher? Do what? Was it when you went down through the bottom of Wyoming, was it as far as Douglas or even further? Um, I'm going to have to actually look at a map too. Um, maps. It was, so Gillette is farther north than Casper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we would have been we would have been down below Douglas coming up. Yeah, right. Um, so you really were like coming back up. Yeah, and it and it was like a good, I want to say it was a good hour and a half, two hours of just mm. two lane road, and then like the last fifteen minutes on the interstate to get to Gillette. Like, um, man, my internet sucks tonight. I'm a, I'm gonna blame it on the thunderstorms. Yeah, I would. We generally blame rain on and rain and weather like that on us when it goes yeah. slow. So we 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 eventually finished in uh, Gillette that day. Mm-hmm. The last thirty minutes going into Gillette, I thought we were going to lose them. Uh, my third son was like, "I'm tired of being in the car. I gotta get out of the car." I was like, "Oh my god, dude, cabin fever." Yeah. He was just like, I was like, dude, I'm haul like Wyoming's the same way. The speed limit's 80. Like I was hauling mm. trying to get to this hotel. Um eventually we got there. And to be honest, we we got him snacks somewhere. We got I figured he'd be calm. We only had like an hour. The last the last stretch was only like an hour in the car, like gas station, mm. fill up, get food. And that I was actually starting to get coming off the backside of Rushmore. I thought I was going back into Rapid City to get gas. And when we got off, I was like, I don't really know where I'm getting gas next. So I got gas in some tiny town in Southeast Wyoming, uh, which, which works. I got, I got gas. It was the most expensive tank of gas I bought was in Wyoming on the way back. Not, not no. tiny town there. Just like, it was like three, three fifty nine or something like that, which compared to California gas, like Cal, I think California gas right now is at like four ninety nine. Like oh, no wow. one's a, no one's got the balls enough to go to five dollars. Like they're just all mm. right there. Yeah, well, Dan was right last week when he was talking uh, last time about the um, the price here at the moment. It, it fluctuates, you know, yeah. quite a bit, yeah. and it's it's been quite high at times. So, um, but I love having a diesel now. I pay about forty cents a liter cheaper than what I used to pay for petrol. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I know, and the car runs twice as many k's. 
So second day, um, second day, we basically, we used I-90 headed north out of Gillette, uh, up into Montana, all the way to Billings. Um, and then from Billings, we, we hopped off and drove a, a basically a two, two lane road again, which is a, a US highway um, out of Billings, which Billings is interesting. You, you come in from the South on the interstate, you hop off, you fill up, you drive through town for maybe about 10 minutes. And then you take this road that just kind of goes up this giant plateau. And then it like all of town is out below you to the, to the West. Like it's just, it just drops off and it's all in this big Valley. Um, and you, there's an airport to the east of you and you just kind of head out of town and then Billings is gone in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just kind of like, it's a big name town in Montana. Like it gets on all the maps and 20 minutes later, we were completely through it. <laughs> wow. So, um, the geography was really interesting in Wyoming. Like I'd driven across Southern Wyoming before, which was kind of boring and flat, but like there were mountains, there were hills, like things started to pop up. And as you get into Montana, it just kind of started to get bigger. Um, but there were sections where it felt like the rolling hills of Kansas every now and then. Like I, I have a, a picture in my bathroom. Uh, it's just rolling hills and it looks so much like here. Somebody took it in Idaho. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just the weird how the geography changes all the time. So um, I did not realize that the suburban was destroying <laughs> bugs just yeah this is this is actually it's a lot of surface area to cut through it's a lot of surface area but like look at the the valance down below like the very bottom mm. splitter is just covered mm. none of, like the windshield was getting bugs on the windshield but not like this so it shows where the airflow goes yeah i it definitely like you could see it's forcing stuff under because they're all getting dropped under there pretty hard uh it does not look like that anymore i definitely spent i spent hmm. a long time at a at a pay-as-you-go car wash with a power washer uh <laughs> cleaning myself <laughs> cleaning that the i saw the the bowden stuff that i use on my car over there they have something called bugger off um which is quite good and they've got a really cool cloth that you can use and it actually really? just totally removes them yeah Sweet. and how do you how is it that you have an fdny plate on the front so my wife is originally uh from new york and her uncle was a new york city fireman who responded on 9 11 so that's 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 why that plate's on there and it's it's really her plate um that's and when, cool. when we switched out um vehicles the Sequoia didn't have a front plate holder and the Suburban did. So it, it went to the Suburban. So the, so the Sequoia doesn't have a front plate holder? Nope. Kansas, we only have front plates. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a state by state. It varies in the U.S. Yeah. Is, is Arizona the same? They only, or no, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. I think they only have rear plates. As yeah, well. they're only rear. Colorado's is that only rear. Or Colorado's not. Colorado is or isn't. I don't remember now. Missouri is, which okay. is the, the funny because that's it's literally eight miles to the east. So mm. we see Missouri plates all the time. <laughs> um, I speaking of, of trucks though, we we finally got to where we were staying in Montana. So this where did is you, where did you camp in Montana? So this is Columbia Falls. This is this is okay. where the town where our, our cabin was in, and we, this is at a grocery store. We stopped. We we're like, hey, let's hit supplies while we're here. Um, and this is a U.S. Forestry Service fire truck that's cool <laughs> i love this green someday i will have yeah. a vehicle that will be i think it's like u.s federal like 595 is what the the color code is yeah they did afford did that bronco tribute in that yes color as well. absolutely so but like when you see a fire truck and it's this big like it it's really big <laughs> yeah oh, it'd be huge. what is it an f3 I have no idea what it is. Um, it's an international. I don't think it's a Ford. Okay. I didn't. I didn't yeah. take a picture from the front. I messed Actually, up. Actually, you're right. Yeah, looking at that grill and and stuff. Yeah, I it's like. Right. Uh, yeah. Have you seen the the Earth Roamers where they have like the Earth Roamer like heavy duty ones? Mm -hmm. The and it's like it's like that kind of chassis kind of thing. So yeah, it, it, it looks... probably is Ford based, but it's like the the commercial truck version. Yeah, it looks like the international that one of the supercars team uses their prime mover hauler, yeah. similar style front end. 
So I've got cabin pictures. Because <laughs> we finally made it to a cabin. So we found this thing online. Nice. And it was almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> almost? <laughs> almost perfect. Well, we still had to try to use Wi-Fi and it had satellite based Wi-Fi and it wasn't Elon Musk Starlink. It was just <laughs> HughesNet. So uh, my wife had to do some work while we were there. And so uh, when she was needing to send emails with any kind of megabytes attachment, uh, we had to tell all the kids to get off the Wi-Fi. So it, it was actually, <laughs> it, it was kind of like this, uh, I don't want to say double-edged sword. It was a, a nice juxtaposition of being in a cabin that has the wi-fi but also getting the kids off the wi-fi so they had to mm -hmm. like interact and do stuff and play games um which they were all pretty good about if it was mom needed to work but it didn't have air conditioning and the highs the whole time we were there were supposed to be in the in the mid to upper 90s um the one thing it had and you can kind of this is actually the exhaust port is it had this little ac unit and kind of the yeah. big room of the house that was set to 65 degrees and it was on all the time. And, <laughs> and this is the hot air spewing out of the cabin <laughs> that that little thing uh, was trying to keep up with. So, but it had this, this nice deck and it had a wraparound porch on the back. Um, actually took a shot on the inside, which is the kind of, it looks very much at home there. It, it just, it, I, I have thought that the suburban looked a little too city-ish um just because of the the 22 inch wheels on it like it feels like it belongs sure. in a city too much um but it handled this trip great like it worked so this is the inside of the cabin um as soon as the res will actually come in so this is the the little ac unit hanging out over here in the corner yeah. um i actually messed up the first night and i left the cooler full outside which is a super big no-no in bear country. I was going to say, was it empty when you got back to it the next morning? Still full, still full. So oh, the, wow. The, You're very lucky. The locals look at bears as in they don't want them around whatsoever. So when any when in their bear sightings, they actually have uh, animal control type stuff that comes in and tries to run the bears off. Mm -hmm. um, they'll relocate them. Um, they have... Uh, especially trained dogs to try to run the bears off if the bears oh, still wow. return to the same spot and then like they'll they'll relocate them if they come back then it's the dogs no i'm sorry they use bean bags fired from weapons huh. to try really? to drive wow. them away then it's the dogs if they still come back after that then they'll actually put the bears down because they want bears to be afraid of humans so yeah. that there's no interaction whatsoever and that was yeah. who told me that? i think that was one of the tour get one of the tour guides said that step and i could be completely wrong so this cabin worked out great because upstairs in the loft there were four twin beds so mm -hmm. we just had we just put all the boys upstairs uh and then <laughs> down that middle staircase uh there was a room with a queen bed which is where sarah and i slept and then there was one room that had a twin over full bunk bed which that just became our daughter's room so she she hung <laughs> out in there but like there was enough space that everyone could kind of spread out a little bit but at the same yeah. time, uh, and then there was like a, a one and a half bath. So there, there was a half bath back here. They had a good little mud room in here where we could actually stash like the cooler lived in there, the, the stroller, the backpack kind of stuff. Um, and it, it really, it, it, we got it on a VRBO and we were incredibly happy with it the whole time. Yeah, that's um, perfect. I feel like I need to go faster in what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... By the way, I need to share this with the, so for the listening audience, I'm sharing Joel's picture of a lot of Neva right now for the viewing audience. This is what Joel <laughs> sent me earlier and finally downloaded. <laughs> and that's a really clean example. That thing looks yeah. great. Yeah, James has looked after that thing. It's pretty cool. The only thing I'm nervous about is finding um, that skinny of an altering tire that's not that yeah. aggressive of a tread. Yeah. Yeah, it would be hard. I they think, only, they almost look like tractor tires. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask him where they got them from because I think they're reasonably new. Yeah, those are... Man. I wasn't joking earlier when I said we were in a shooting gallery. No, that was a big one, that one. Yeah, that was right outside. So, okay. Glacier. Let's talk about Glacier because that's really... Glacier National Park 
um it's not i think it's the fourth national park in the u.s um everybody in california says that yosemite is the first national park that's actually not it it's yellowstone um sorry californians um mm-hmm. jeff come at me um yes yosemite is amazing and i haven't been there but <laughs> and i do want to go there but it's not the oldest it's yellowstone so glacier water so when you th- when I think of the Rocky Mountains, I think of the Rocky Mountains being very tight because in Denver, driving I-70, everything's super close, right? And all of those ridges and things like that that are water-formed are very V-shaped. So that's where you normally have the river, the railroad track, and the interstate all right on top of each other because there's no actually room in that yeah. valley to get through. Like they're it's right a, they're, of, Yeah, they're tight valleys. When you get up to Glacier, it's, it's so much different because glaciers formed valleys as U's, and sometimes the use can be massive um and so going up the way we went up we we drove north um we never went into kalispell we we came out of uh helena we drove north out of helena and kind of went up over a, a pass that we're actually going to talk about in a little bit um and it's just this, this wide valley where you can see these huge mountain ranges on either side, but the elevation isn't that high. That's the thing that kept getting me all the time is that we never really were at really high elevations. You're, we're like Denver's higher than a, a lot of where we were. Denver's 5,380 feet, right? 5,280 feet. What's a mile? Oh my gosh, I forgot. 5,280 feet. Yeah, I feel. I might be taking crazy pills tonight. <laughs> Denver's mile high. <laughs> it's 5,000, 5,300 feet. Some of them like it. Oh, I would look it up on my, literally my internet is completely failing. So Glacier National Park, the reason it's there. Gentleman out of name, James Hill, lived in Minnesota, wanted to run his railroad from Minneapolis to Puget Sound and basically just started laying the railroad west and hired people and kept building, kept building, kept building. Never took a federal dollar, which is kind of super strange for a railroad to, yeah. it's, it's the only private, it's the only transcontinental that's completely privately funded. He got to the Continental Divide, which is right where Glacier is. It's just the Continental Divide way north. And they spent three years trying to find a way through. Oh, wow. He got tired of those guys and fired everybody, brought in John Stevens and immediately found a pass. I'm fairly certain I drove through this pass on the way north uh, for the railroad. So Stevens found the pass through the Continental Divide. And then like months later, found another pass through the Cascades, which is now called Stevens Pass. The one in the Cascades actually is named for him. So that guy was the chief engineer. Uh, moving the railroad across, he then became the chief engineer of the Panama Canal. So, like, John Stevens did some shit. <laughs> like, yeah, if you some big stuff too. Yeah, like, talk about putting your put your stamp on it, right? So now Hill has this railroad. This this freight rail is really what he was looking for to go from Minneapolis all the way out to Seattle. They started to do some passenger service along it, and his son Lewis was then riding the trains and they would get it out and they would get to where Glacier is. And because he is a person of wealth at the time, he'd been to Europe and he was like, man, this stuff looks like Switzerland. And so he started branding it as the Switzerland of North America Hmm. and started to then think about, Hey dad, why don't we put some stuff here? And they started out with like some tent cities, which eventually got all the way to the point of putting the Lake McDonald lodge in which that, that was really interesting to me on the lodge because, oh, come on, scroll pictures. Um, you don't, uh, like where I now drive up to the lodge, that's the backside of the building. They, they put the front side of the building facing the lake, which this is actually the front side of the lodge yeah. to the lake. Um, so they, they, the only way to get there was you'd get off the train and then you, you'd take like a cart to the edge of the lake. And then the edge of, from the edge of the lake, you would then take a boat. It's a 10 mile long, one and a half mile wide lake, which is Lake McDonald. And then you would stay at the lodge here. Um, 
from, so this is one of the, the first like hotels in there. The, and then, oh man, what was it? Ninth, I can't even remember the year it became a national park. It was early 1900, like 1920s. They decided to put a road in and that's the going to the sun road that you hear about all the time, which, okay. So construction began in 21 and it took them till 32 to go all the way across the continental divide to from West Glacier to East Glacier. It's 50 miles of road. The East Glacier village is on the Blackfoot Reserve in Native American reservation. So these guys spent 11 years building this massive road. The, the thing about the going to the sun road that is so, I don't know, I don't know if it's intense. Um, the amount of engineering that went into it in that time and it's still like hanging on they didn't just build a road and do like a little retaining wall like some in some places they built like 70 to 100 feet of wall down the mountain wow to hold the road to the mountain and so it's never it's never super steep and and the top of the pass logan pass is only like 6600 feet of elevation but the, the amount of engineering that they put into it is just ridiculous. Like I'm not doing a good enough job describing how they, they only had, I think they said they only had three people die on the road and they all died the same day. Wow. Um, it is the spot at which it happened. And I missed getting a picture of it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get so. There is a spot in the road where it 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 kind of goes into the mountain a little bit and kind of curves and comes out. And as it comes out, there are three arches. And oh man, which ones I should have tools size? Nope, large. Um, and where those here, there's a oh, come on. Producing and showing. Now they're all tiny images because they're so big. <laughs> it doesn't want to show it for me. Okay. That one's reasonably sized. Oh my gosh. So what did you pick there to go? So it was kind of a, a family decision. We met other family up there too. Okay. Um, so this is this is actually a really good representation of oh, it. Cool. So this this corner. <laughs> where this avalanche has come down is mm. where three guys were down. They were down the wall working on the wall beneath when the avalanche came and swept all three of them away. Oh, wow. So some, some argue that the three arches here are to memorialize them. Mm -hmm. Others argue that like, it's a super good way to build the road. And so they just built the road that way. <laughs> like it has nothing to do. The thing that I was most interested with was and i think you can see it in this image oh come on why are they all so small i picked large so in corners where they routinely get avalanches they stopped rebuilding the stone wall so like see how this is stone here yeah so in the in the corner sections where they constantly get the avalanches they now bolt steel sections into the road and then across the top, put wood uh, that basically look like telephone poles that they cut in mm -hmm. half and just bolted them to those. And literally, once they close the road in the late fall, they just take all those down. And so, like, the avalanche comes down and washes over the road, and there's no wall to then remove. Wow. But as soon as they reopen there, so the plows go up though in the spring without those walls in place. <laughs> At the top, Logan Pass can get sometimes 80 feet of snow at the top. So when those wow. plows are going up, it is super deep snow that they're going mm. through. Um, yeah, it was, it, it was a very, we, we took a bus tour up the road. We didn't, we didn't drive it ourselves. Um, we rode in, in what is affectionately known as the red buses because they're the red. red. Bus. I've, seen, so, I've seen the photo of that. Yeah. They, 
This one, so they were they were built in 37, 38, and 39. There were very few that were built in 39. It was like seven of them showed up in 1939. Mm -hmm. But it's the same basic chassis. Like the, the doors and the bodies are all the same. Um, the chassis was a wood chassis underneath. Now it's running on like a Ford E450. Oh, um, nice. So like it's a it's a basically a van set up underneath it they run on propane oh really yeah and i, I want to say it's like a 6.8 liter v8 that runs on propane um and they're talking about turning them into evs <laughs> that's um, cool because the one the only i, I want i don't want to say it's a negative but like while we were going up one of the heat shields underneath was rattling Oh. And so like, it kind of took you out of a little bit, this amazing experience of mm. just the heat shield because everything around you is absolutely gorgeous. Like there's the rocks. I'm sure they won't let you take these rocks out of Montana because they look, they're so amazing. I'd, I'd put them everywhere. I'd put them in every flower bed I had around my house. <laughs> I don't care what it costs. I want these rocks. Um, but is that I've, just the natural, just the, the natural minerals coming out of the ground? Yeah, it's just the natural uh, geology of Montana, just that the That's red cool. and then all of the other colors. Um, I took some some photos at Lake McDonald. So it the the bus tour was really educational because he just kind of filled us in on everything on why the railroad was there, why all the stuff was there. At the end of Lake McDonald, there's a place called, oh man, I put it in the notes. It's called Village Inn, and, and it's like a 1960s motor motel. But what's great about it is every single room has a lake view. Like, it's just That's built good. along the side of the lake. Um, yeah, the, 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 the rocks in the lake, hold on. I, I, we were there with some people, and the people we were there with, like, yeah, let's put them in the water. And so I got my Instagram uh, toes in the water picture. Uh, mm. for kid 4.0 we got our toes in the water but like yeah, no, the entire beach is just little rocks like it's all rocks all over the place the kids actually liked it they were like they just walked up to the water and started throwing rocks like it was mm. it was okay until like the kayaker showed up and we we're like all right you guys you guys probably shouldn't throw some of some of you are getting close to the kayakers but the thing that we fought the whole time we were there was wildfire haze yeah, because they're to the west of you, wasn't it? Yeah, so supposedly this is all from Oregon um, mm -hmm. while we were there. There were Oregon wildfires. And so early on in the morning, like the haze was even heavier. Like it, the sun, I think it's hailing now. The sun mm -hmm. could burn some of it off. Um, and so like this was this was like super early in the morning. It was like 7, 7, 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, the other thing that I needed to experience is because we went so far north it was daylight till almost 10 o'clock at night oh really wow so even as late in the summer as we were still mm. like we, we were putting the kids to bed at like 9 9 30 every night we're like well this is it's still brought it's pretty like well and like we were also like thinking about like them on central time still like they were going to bed at 10 10 30 every night <laughs> like it was oh it what's was, the time time difference is it so a couple of hours it's only an hour behind us it's one hour behind okay. us, mountain time yeah yeah, but it it was really this this is what I I, I my my future goals for the suburban just a, a little <laughs> lift kit. Yeah. So I'm a little different with my stickers. I don't put the stickers on the outside of the box. I put them on the inside. Yeah. Like I don't I don't need anybody In the knowing. I don't need to know anybody knowing where I've been. Like I'll, I'll put my podcast sticker up there. But uh, my my favorite was the the CRV here with the two backpacks like. Yeah, I saw that you posted in the That's group. I think. So, so <laughs> over overweight. Um, yeah, but this is like so. This is really close to the bottom, headed up of the of the road. Just it it just there's peaks all around, but it, there's more space between them. Um, I feel like the the sections around Rocky Mountain National for me, like all of those mountains feel like they're always up on top of you. Rarely do you then come out into a big open valley. And some of that happened in Glacier. Like it was, in, it was really interesting. The difference I know I'm sharing and scrolling because I was trying to get up to this <laughs> one 
where it was see like this is a little more daylight and so you got a little yeah, more mountains that. that's but, all right and it and so the second day we so the first day we took the bus tour the second day we took the boat tour which was actually this boat right here oh look at that um i kind of wish it was a little bigger boat because they allow you to get up here in this viewing area up here and I took a couple of steps and I felt the boat shift underneath my weight. I was like, <laughs> oh, it's not as big as I think it is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, again, just the, the rocks. Seriously, I'm going back with a trailer. Um, but then these these are the like, I, I am not a photographer by trade. This is just a cell phone picture. That's pretty if, amazing. If I could just get the fire smoke to go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the, a trick you can do it. There's a, if I'll teach you how to use Lightroom and there's a little, uh, um, actually you can use it in Photoshop. You can, there's just a little um, tool called to haze and it okay. actually pulls that out, pulls that out. I, I don't know if I want to though. Like I, I kind of just want to leave uh, it. Just a, just a slight, slight tweak. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's it's gorgeous up there though send them to me and i'll i'll have a bit of a play and send it back to you <laughs> deal yeah so we we did yeah, it's just stunning the other thing i noticed a lot of people in montana don't take off the winter tires oh really like i got to the point where i was like what tire is the, oh himalayan oh it's a snow tire that they because i guess it's only like four months out of as far north as we were here i guess it's only like four months out of the year it doesn't snow Mm. so for for them it's like june probably the end of may june july august and by september like they probably have changes of snow in september yeah so uh just, you just don't know if you get an early, a, a light finish or an early start yeah. then it doesn't really make sense it was always easy to find the cabin because this was at the end of the driveway <laughs> it was not there the first day we showed up and it was there every yeah. day after so i'm not really sure what was going on there so there, there looked like there was a nice, uh, a fancy house up at the end of the road there. And so I don't know if that was where their help parks or what. <laughs> <laughs> um, I took a ton of pictures. So this was our last night. Uh, this is the, oh, that fire that. haze again. Just, but it's, yeah, it, it, it is weird to be in the Rocky Mountains and not have it feel like the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. Like it's still the continental divide. Like it's the same mountains. But it's so, and I'll probably be getting that this range probably has a different name. I've completely butchered it and everyone. Yeah, we didn't see any bears. We saw a uh, bighorn sheep. We saw, oh, uh, this is this is the aftermath right here. <laughs> so the cooler sat between in this space here in the middle. Yeah. And this is when I pulled the cooler out. This is everything that was left uh, uh, for, I mean, we spent a lot of time in the truck, even when we were there kind of thing, driving around and seeing everything. So I gave, I gave the boys a, a, a mini lecture. Actually, they, they <laughs> helped me clean all of it. Um, and all my other photos didn't transfer over to this file. That stinks. So yeah, that's basically Montana. That's very cool. <laughs> it, so the, the, the story that I like and and, and it's there's two stories that I like. One is the going to the sun road has the name because one, when you get to the top of Logan Pass, there are five peaks up there kind of around you um, that they basically consider that they're crown jewels. There are five, it's like a, a crown up there. The Blackfeet Native Americans have a story. And the reason it's called going to the sun is one of those peaks is called going to the sun mountain. Yeah. Because their story is their deity came down, walked amongst them, made sure he did all of his work correctly. He was content with himself. He went to the top of that mountain and then went to the sun. He left to go with the rest of the deities. So it's going to the sun mountain. Yeah. The, that Native American tribe believed at that time that that was the highest point in the world. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, they, we now know that it, there's more than that, but yes, for them but at the time, yeah, yeah, at the time locally. So like that's that's some solid stuff. But like the top of that's only six thousand feet. Like Trail Ridge is eleven thousand plus. Like mm. you walk at the at the Trail Ridge Visitor Center, you walk hike up to the peak next to you, and you're at twelve thousand. Like wow. you double the height. So yeah, it it 
the interesting part of it is like you're still above tree line at the Logan Pass. Like you you still feel like you're way high, but you're only at six thousand feet. Hmm. It's, it, it's just the weird perception of all of the different places and mountains and uh i because we've we've been to estes so many times and going over trail ridge is almost second nature at this point like <laughs> you want to go get pizza in winter park you take trail ridge like it was yeah it saves you time um there is a section of the going to the sun road where they have a weeping wall where it's just literally a section of the wall there that's always wet oh wow that will eventually not be wet oh okay because glacier is losing its glaciers. Yeah. So it's drastic, slowly disappearing. Slowly disappearing. And what makes it a glacier is there has to be movement to it. Otherwise, it's just an ice field, which is mm-hmm. separate scientific designation. I didn't I didn't know that part about glacier. I didn't know no, it had to be either. moving. So uh for when it's moving, it's actually cutting the rock underneath as well. So places where there are still glaciers moving in glacier are still changing the mountains underneath them, which is kind of, kind yeah, of wow. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, I think that's it. If, if you want to see glaciers, you got to get out there. Soon. Mm. There, there, there is one that every season when it gets to the warm months, they expect it to be gone already. Like there's, there's a wow. list of like five that they're expecting. Yeah. There's one that was supposed to be gone like three years ago. It's still there. They're not sure how like, <laughs> so every year it's just going to kind of disappear. Yeah, and it and it used to be that there, I want to say there were hundreds of them throughout the park, and now it's down to I think like twenty five or twenty eight or something like that. Yeah, right. Wow. Um, but as they all go away, it preps for the next ice age, which hopefully happens when I'm dead and gone. Um, <laughs> I don't want it to. So um, now glacier things to be aware of at glacier national park you can buy so all the national parks you buy a park entrance fee right glacier this summer instituted something called a going to the sun road permit so you have your park entrance fee and you have to have your going to the sun road permit if you want to go in the west glacier entrance or the east glacier entrance that attaches to going to the sun road because the road, that road literally just goes up over the Continental Divide and goes to the other side of the park. There are no roads that split off that road. Well, there are some, but most of them don't then go to like other places in the park. So I didn't have the permit. Oh. But both days we went in early, we had reservations for the bus tour or the boat tour. They're like, you're okay. fine. That's not that big a deal. Every other day after that, you needed to have the permit if you wanted to get in early. Uh, otherwise, you could show up at five and you didn't need a permit anymore. Great. So we we went in and hiked one day yeah. at 530. It's at light till nine. Day. Yeah. Like, there's still like four hours of daylight left. Uh, That's so bizarre we, that they'll let you, they let you in after a certain time. It's kind of yeah, weird. Well, it, it's, it was their version of trying to control traffic on traffic the road. flow yeah okay because it, it used to sense. be that they would average like 1.3 million visitors a summer and wow. then in the last like i want to say like two to five years they're now averaging 4.5 was it busy when you were there so yes there were a lot of cars and people and so mm-hmm. they actually had checkpoints out from the main gate to make sure that you had the permit that day to get in yeah and it was a daily issued permit and so if you didn't get it if you didn't get it super advanced like every 48 hours they would like 48 hours from now would be available 48 hours from now would be available. yeah okay. like it was like a, a rolling window of stuff that would like reopen but they were snapped and up you quick just, you just buy it online yeah it's uh recreation.gov and then you just show them your little thing and they call it good so, yeah okay. but after after 5 p.m like it felt like even the the park entrance fee. They didn't even care about the park entrance fee after five p.m. Like I went, I went. I'm scrolling on my phone. She's like, "Sir, do you have it?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Go." Like it's yeah. just like okay. So it got it. You just it was an experiment this summer um, to to kind of do some crowd control. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they've, they they've been worried about the park being overcrowded because really it's a single road in and out where yeah. all the main stuff is off. Um, 
there was uh, another lake kind of uh, to the northwest that I was like, well, it's an unpaved road. And then um, it said it was a rough road in and that front splitter on the suburban drags and parking lots all the time. So I was a little hesitant to do it. And I talked to mm. a friend, uh, he lives out in Denver. And I talked to him uh, a couple of days ago because I've been posting pictures. And he's like, dude, you did our exact same trip. We just did it six years ago. I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and Ryan was like, I, I told him about the Bowman Lake, right? He's like, oh, you should have done it. We did it in our Honda Odyssey. I was like, well, <laughs> damn. Because <it. laughs> like, I, I was trying to find ways to get a little farther out, but not make everyone have to hike. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have a ton of distance hikers with us. Um, yeah. So, but the, 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 the interesting piece is the west side of Lake McDonald has recently burned. I want to say it burned in 2018. So that's uh, coming back as a young forest. The east side of Lake McDonald is a temperate rainforest. So very similar to what you see out in Washington and Oregon with giant ponderosas and uh, western red cedars, which are trees that you did not, I didn't expect to see. The western red cedars I did not <laughs> expect to see. I'm like, what is happening here? That tree does not look familiar. Um, yeah, just different type of pine trees. And then you can tell, like, they get snow. Like, yeah. It's a heavy, wet snow. Um so the only other thing, the, the thing that made me laugh was we took two different tours, right? We got conflicting stories <laughs> all the time. So I'm going to, I'm going to trust the bus tour guy because he's been doing it for seven years and the boat yeah. tour guide had only been doing it for a year. So I don't know who she, who she got her information from. So I'm going to, I'm going to trust the guy who's been doing it longer, but Lake McDonald got its name because there were two Scots emigrated to Canada living in Canada, coming down and trading with the Salish and the Blackfeet and Native American tribes for fur. And then they would go back up to Canada and sell the furs, right? Well, one time, uh, Duncan, the son, went with Angus, the father, and they got to a, got their furs, headed back north, got to a tea in the trail, and he's like, I've never gone that way. And they were like, all right, let's go that way. And they went that way, got to the end of that trail, and that's where Lake McDonald was. At the time, it wasn't called Lake McDonald. But mm -hmm. Duncan supposedly rode on a tree. Duncan McDonald was here. <laughs> and awesome. then they turned and went back and walked, walked the other way. Well, it turned out Duncan McDonald stayed in that area a long time, traded with the Blackfeet, traded with the Salish, uh, got friendly with both tribes to the point where he could actually, um, he became a liaison between the two because the Blackfeet would, uh, they hated the Salish coming over because they were worried that the Salish would uh, come into their Buffalo territory where the Salish was more of a mountain uh, tribe. They didn't have the wide plains. Like as soon as you go over the east side of Glacier and like five minutes down the road, wide open prairie. Yeah, wow. It's it's almost fact, nuts. It just like it changes. It's, yeah, it's like literally like you're in these giant mountains. You go to the other side and it's like poof, Buffalo forever. Uh, that was the only bison we saw, actually. It was on the east side of, of, of Glacier. So it's really, yeah, it's a cool place. I'm not doing it justice in a single audio <laughs> version or video version. I should have taken way more pictures. And the best part is we have to go back. Because yeah, the one thing on. I really wanted to see up there was Flathead Lake near Kalispell. Mm -hmm. And we were in Kalispell twice and just never got to the lake. So okay. I want to get over to Flathead National Forest. We drove through Flathead National Forest, but not close enough to the lake to actually see anything. So mm -hmm. there are a string of um, lakes kind of going as we went north through like central Montana, or I guess it's western Montana. Um, there, there's like a string of these lakes and there are these amazing uh, lake houses on the side of these lakes. And some of them are big enough for like power boats and stuff. And some of them are just yeah, like wow. kayaks and whatever, mm. but it's absolute, like the sun was setting. So it's shine out the water, it was shine on these cabins. Like it looked amazing. Like it looks really pretty. It's gorgeous. Flat. Somebody did a video forever ago of flathead. And I can't remember if it was like a, God, it was a media company and they literally were like hitting each national park kind of thing. And they mm -hmm. did flathead national forest. And it was like, ridiculously gorgeous like tall pines huge huge spaces yeah. of open water so so did you did you do the drive back in a day or did you no god no um okay. so on the way back so on the way up i wasn't sure what route google maps had picked um i couldn't get zoomed in close enough to figure it out and so i actually yeah. like bumped it over and so we came up 
the west side of Glacier where we could have come in the east side and then US, I think it's US 2 is directly below Glacier and that would have been the fastest way. So that's actually the way we went out was US 2 and then you end up with I-25. Um, and then you kind of hop off I-25 a couple of times, get down to Billings again and get on 90. And we stayed in Casper, Wyoming on the way home. So mm -hmm. it was a little farther south. Um, yeah. But again, like the, the kids loved it because it had every fast food restaurant that we hadn't seen in forever. So like <laughs> we, we rarely will let them like each pick what they want. Like I think we hit three fast food. There was a KFC. There was a Taco Bell. I think we hit an Arby's. We the just court. got Taco. We've got Taco Bell in Australia now. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's demolition. Man, love it. Demolition man's coming true then. Correct. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it'll win the restaurant wars. wars. Oh, I don't know if it'll win the restaurant wars, but yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is definitely. It is cool that it's here. So that's on. Um, that's on HBO Max. I was watching that the other night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> such a With terrible first, movie. Yeah. Uh, um, there is one thing we haven't covered off is that one of your formula guests formula formula yes former guests is now got a new career yeah i i saw that and i was gonna reach out to him uh and then i was like we just had him on <laughs> it feels <laughs> rude to reach out that fast. So, but no tanner faust got a new uh driving gig uh yeah he's and, down to formula e well extremey sorry extremey yes extremey I, yeah <laughs> which to be honest it makes perfect sense for his skills yeah. That was actually lightning in the window that time. Oh, I can hear that. That was that was like right next to me. I could see it flashing the, on the screen yeah. next to me. Um, yeah, so Tanner's going to drive for McLaren in Extreme E, which that'll be kind of awesome. Ross, Ross and I keep doing the, the joke game about how we're, we're uh, how as we talk to people, the, the, the steps of separation from other people mm -hmm. that we've been talked to. Like, I, we're definitely one from Rutledge. Like, I, I also yeah. feel like if we sent Rutledge an email, he'd probably talk to us too um oh, I, think you, I think you need to that needs to be on your list i think definitely uh yeah definitely reach out to Rudd. i well a friend of mine who she in australia here who's a massive mclaren fan um when it was announced i copied her in on a tweet and then she wrote back and said that she now that they now need to um get uh rutledge and adam together to do a you know uh <laughs> one of their podcast series um episodes with the three of them again to talk about it and uh yeah. she tweeted that out and adam liked it so um you know I'm, the guys are i, I think all three of them are stuff. ready to hang out with each other <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> they Fantastic. that, sh yeah, that show great. actually got to the thing that we all hope they'd be able to do is that they'd be able mm -hmm. to become friends and naturally yeah. rib each other and, and that's what they eventually mm -hmm. got there we just need it more now <laughs> so i'm intrigued to see who his, who his co-driver will be because it's uh it's generally a, a female driver um that is the co-driver in extreme e so um so it'll be very interesting to see who they pick um and how they go next year because tanner's you know he's, he's not slow i think um God, no. you know rossberg's team who's currently been who's, who's won the last two rounds with good old aussie molly taylor in there uh has done really really well and it'll be interesting to see how tanner goes um you know in amongst it all i think next year so or next season yeah it'll be really interesting mm. i i do wonder who they'll get to be a co-driver now but Molly, yeah. Molly Taylor's fast. Like she, yeah, she's, she's fast really in Subaru. Fast. Like, yeah, <laughs> she's quick. Like she, you watch her compete and she's, she's got that car handled really, really well. You, I watched the first round live and you could just see when she was behind the wheel, she was all over it. Yeah. She's really comfortable behind the wheel. So, uh, and that's the thing, both, um, you know, a lot of the top guys, you can just see how, you know, cause it's, 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 it's fast and it's quick, but um you know, and when you go off, you go on off in a big way for, for some of the drivers that have had issues. But yeah, it's it's quite interesting. So yeah, very excited to see how Tanner goes next year. Yeah, it would be great. I my only issue is I've been having a hard time finding video of Extreme E. Like I've seen crashes. Yeah. The first the first was all um uh was all stream live on Facebook and YouTube, but then the second okay. one it went on to extreme weird networks and um the network that i'm on is part of it but yeah. um it's just kind of weird that i couldn't get still couldn't watch it so i've only sent the highlights from the second round sorry i got i got stuck looking at rally videos all of a sudden so. yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to do 
Well, the guys, the guys out at Rally Rally Ready just did Grid Life out in Colorado. And oh, they, cool. so Grid Life is normally like drifting and music festival. Well, yep. at, they were at Pikes Peak, Pikes Peak International Raceway, I think. And there, there was just land next to them. And, and, and Texas Dave took a, a skid loader and built a rally stage. That's cool. So they had rally sprints while they were there too. So uh, that's, that's somebody else I'm going to email about getting back on the show. Yeah, yeah definitely. He was email. great. I, I uh, yeah, he was, he was, I really enjoyed his, uh, his episode. That was really quite Well, cool. my, my favorite part about Dave is he does a solid New Zealand accent. <laughs> he does. I think I remember that. Yeah. There's a video of him and Zach Clapman uh, driving a Bronco around. Um, if you can find that video, yeah. it is absolutely hilarious because they're both doing accents. So oh, wow. uh, my accent game is not strong. So no, um, mine's not either. I think we've done a show. I think we have. What do you, what do you want to plug? Just me, I suppose. Just you, Joel, Joel Just Strick photo. At, yeah, Joel Strick photo <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow my personal one um, where I just post general random bits and pieces behind the scenes and whatever else, if when I'm not posting stories, it's just Joel underscore underscore Strick um, just on Insta. Um, I use that for, I posted a picture of me washing the car yesterday just because. Yeah, I was say, I saw that snow, it's not, snowball. There's <laughs> not much else I can really do at the moment, unfortunately, being in lockdown. So yeah. How, how much longer do you guys think that's going to go? Well, they're saying another week. Uh, so about six days, but okay. it's not looking good. They reckon it might be another week again. So um, a friend of mine loves posting on Twitter every time. It's like, you remember the game Daytona? The yeah. Car game? Time extension? Yeah. Every, time every extension. time. My time good extension. friend, uh, James, uh, always <laughs> likes to post time extension, time oh. extension after after another push by another week. So nice. yeah, we might get another time extension next week, which is frustrating because, you know, there's so much stuff that I've got to, you know, got in the in the wings to try and do, and uh, yeah, it's just a matter of playing the waiting game. So yeah, hopefully they'll get on top of it sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, I'm fully vaccinated. My wife is, most of my family is. So, um, so we're just, you know, we're just full speed ahead. Yeah, pretty much. Put mask on, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. The kids, the kids went to school today. That's what I, I was very happy. Today was the, oh okay. They were uh, the fifth and fifth grader and first grader. Good lord had half days today and then okay. uh, tomorrow eighth fifth and first will be in full days okay i'll actually have some peace and quiet to myself for yeah exactly <laughs> get some work done i'll try send that send that send those emails get those uh yeah. the uh the next uh, lot of guests lined up exactly uh yeah. some of those emails have already been sent so that's so good some of the names coming on i'm just kind of like are you sure and they're like yeah no we want to come on i was like oh okay <laughs> well, every time every week you you, you you post in the group, you know, uh, who's, who's next, or I'm just, just putting this one to go out on the, under the, under Hooniverse. It's like, wow, that's a good get. Wow. That's another really good get. Wow. You got that one. So, like, <laughs> so sometimes you never know. So, Oh, and yeah. my backlog, I now need to spend more time catching up on them. Cause I just, I just haven't had a chance no. not doing the, the K's or the driving and, and whatever else. I just haven't had a chance to just sit down and let them, let them stream and listen to them also. Well, that's, uh, the, the kids were all, so we had, there's two DVD screens in the Suburban. And yep. then I have two aftermarket screens that are separate and will strap to headrests. Yep. And I, I strap those into the, the third row seat. So the fifth grader and the first grader both had their own, mm -hmm. or they could watch the second one of whatever was going on in front. Yep. So they, they could have three different movies if they needed to. And then uh, my eighth grader and my three year old were stuck with one screen between them. But he he watched yeah. his phone a lot, so but she, so yeah. she basically had her own personal screen. So there <laughs> there were a lot of movies that were watched. <laughs> yeah, hearing hearing them argue about, well, I'm watching it on mine, and they're like, well, we all want to watch it. Can you please pass it up? So we can all, like, oh no, I'm almost done. I'm like, oh my gosh, just like, just give it to them. <laughs> Rewatch it. You have nothing else to do. There's 12 hours to go. Uh, so cool um cool. you can rate and review the show on itunes if you got to the end of this one thank you uh you can like and subscribe on youtube um you can follow joel it's at joel strict photo or joel underscore strict or the two right yep yeah uh universe the universe on twitter the real universe on instagram 
You can read this or you can find the show on Hooniverse. So we post it each week. Uh, and you can also read what Ross writes on UTV driver, ATV writer. He has something coming up with a Land Rover Discovery, which is already hilarious to me just because he got in it and drove it. So you can follow Ross <laughs> at no, not like the one from friends. He should be back for the next show. I'm at Overlanding Dad. Overland Dad is also a really cool guy. You should follow him too. <laughs> he's, he's got, he used to have a 200 series with a trailer, but now he's got like a Ford Super Duty with a, a camper on a utility bed kind of thing. So he, he stepped up his game. He like, he consolidated down and now he's got like more range and more capability type stuff too. It's like, well, that's awesome. So, oh, also I thought the state vehicle of Montana would be a Wrangler. It is not. It is a crew cab turbo diesel truck. That is massive. They were everywhere. <laughs> there, there were no small, like they were, or a shitbox commuter car, but it was either like <laughs> one or the other, like yeah. giant truck, mini car. That's it. That's our show. We did it. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>